Amidst a cheating scandal that rocks the STIC Test Association, a group of students, including Lin, the top math student with a remarkable academic track record, are summoned to testify about their exceptional grades. Lin's personal journey begins when her father, a teacher with a modest income, tries to enroll her in an expensive school against her wishes due to the financial burden it would impose. However, Lin's extraordinary mathematical skills catch the attention of the school's principal during the enrollment process. Impressed by her abilities, the principal offers Lin a scholarship, which she gladly accepts. It is during the ID photo session that Lin crosses paths with Grace, a friendly and affluent girl whose aspirations lie in acting rather than academia. Despite their differences, the two form an instant bond and become close friends. As the story unfolds, a new rule requiring a minimum average grade of 3.2 puts Grace's academic future at risk. Desperate to avoid disappointing her parents, Grace turns to Lin for tutoring, who reluctantly agrees. On the day of the exam, Lin tries to boost Grace's confidence by reminding her of the practiced exercises. However, Grace remains completely lost, leaving Lin deeply concerned. Determined to help her friend, Lin devises a daring plan. She writes the correct answers on an eraser, conceals it in her shoe, and kicks the shoe to Grace. Unfortunately, the shoe ends up in the middle of the classroom, but Lin quickly finds a solution by stepping on the shoe while submitting her own finished test. Grace uses the eraser and achieves a GPA of 3.87, saving her academic standing. In a celebratory gesture, Grace invites Lin to hang out at her pool, where they are joined by Grace's wealthy boyfriend, Pat. During their conversation, Lin's financial struggles come to light, prompting Pat to make a tempting offer. He proposes a significant sum of money for Lin to help him and his friends cheat on their exams. Initially declining the offer, Lin reconsiders when Pat reveals that her father is still burdened with administrative fees despite her scholarship. Distraught, Lin searches her father's desk and finds the paperwork confirming Pat's claims, leaving her in tears. Engaged in piano practice later on, Lin discovers that her nimble fingers can be used for subtle signaling. Inspired by this realization, she accepts Pat's proposal and teaches the group how to communicate answers using hand patterns assigned to each letter. They disguise their activities as piano lessons, maintaining a legal facade and providing an alibi for any future investigations. The group embarks on a successful cheating spree, with Lin discreetly moving her hands on the desk while the others observe, fooling the teachers and securing great grades for everyone. As the cheating business expands, Lin uses the proceeds to support her family and buys her father a much-deserved new shirt. Despite their academic prowess, Lin and Bank, the second-best student in the class, are not friends. However, they are often paired up for math competitions and excel when they collaborate, forming a mutual respect for each other. Bank, like Lin, comes from a humble background, relying on a scholarship as his mother struggles to cover administrative fees with her meager earnings from a laundromat. While Bank possesses an exceptional memory, demonstrated by his ability to recite Pi quickly, he maintains a strong aversion to cheating. After emerging victorious in the Teen Genius competition, Lin and Bank receive a summons from the principal. The principal informs them about an overseas scholarship opportunity, but with only one slot available, they become rivals. Bank, Burdened by the pressure, returns home to find his elderly mother washing clothes by hand due to a broken machine. Despite the mounting stress, Bank prioritizes helping his mother over studying. One day, a classmate named Tong approaches Bank, seeking to pay him for assistance during the exam as the piano code proves too challenging for him. However, Bank declines, unwilling to accept ill-gotten gains. During the exam, Lin continues to use her hand signals, but Tong, unable to memorize them, resorts to trying to peek at Lin's paper. Bank, sensing Tong's cheating intentions, keeps a watchful eye on him and notices his surreptitious glances. Upon completing his own exam, Bank stands up and pretends to stumble next to Lin's desk. He discreetly shows her a note, warning her about Tong's cheating attempts, and Lin pretends to express gratitude. Bank then submits his test to the teacher and reports Tong's behavior before leaving the room. Unfortunately, the teacher disregards the warning, as the test is divided into sets A and B, making cheating seemingly impossible. When Lin and her paying accomplices realize this predicament, panic ensues. They cleverly employ hand gestures to communicate which set they have. Lin, with set A, initiates the hand gestures for that set, enabling everyone on her team to hand in their tests while surrounding the teacher. During this distraction, Lin swaps her paper with Tong, who possesses set B. She hastily completes the remaining exercises and signals the answers to the group with set B. 
With time running out and the teacher approaching to collect the papers, they ignore him but manage to fill in the answers just before he reaches their desks. However, their momentary relief is short-lived when Lin and Tong are unexpectedly summoned to the principal's office after Bank informs her about Tong's misconduct. Despite their denial of any cheating, the principal discovers that Lin's and Tong's papers have been mixed up. Lin's father is called in for a special meeting, and the principal delivers the verdict. Due to this being their first offense and Lin's otherwise commendable academic record, she will not be expelled but will lose her scholarship instead. Outraged, Lin confronts the principal, highlighting the school's exploitation of her father's financial contributions while she is meant to have a scholarship, likening it to cheating. Furious, the principal also revokes Lin's opportunity to apply for an international university-level scholarship, effectively eliminating Bank as her rival. Upon returning home, Lin's father scolds her for her actions, expressing his disappointment by refusing to wear the shirt she had gifted him. Meanwhile, Grace pays a visit to Pat's home for dinner with his parents. Pat's parents mistakenly believe that Grace's influence has improved Pat's academic performance, leading them to encourage her to pursue the STIC with Pat, offering to cover all expenses. Desperate, Grace reaches out to Lin for help. Initially hesitant to jeopardize her reputation again, Lin eventually succumbs to Grace's plea, driven by the promise of a significantly higher payment. However, as Lin reads through the test rules while leaving the building, she realizes that cheating the system seems impossible. Nevertheless, an unexpected revelation occurs when she overhears a conversation between a man and someone in another country, noticing the various clocks displaying different time zones on the wall. This sparks an ingenious idea. The following day, Lin unveils her plan to Grace and Pat. They decide to exploit time zones to their advantage. Lin will take the test in Australia, for hours ahead, allowing her to pass the answers back to Thailand and sell them to anyone interested in taking the test. Grace and Pat's role will be to find additional clients to cover the expenses. This daring strategy not only secures Lin's path to Boston University but also opens up new opportunities for their illicit enterprise. To extract the answers, Lin will need to commit them to memory. Typically, she can memorize a significant amount given enough time, but with only a few minutes remaining after completing the test, she can only memorize half of it. The logical choice for memorizing the other half would be bank, but they refrain from asking him since he strongly opposes cheating. On the night before the scholarship test, Bank is out on his scooter making deliveries for the laundromat. Upon returning home, he is accosted by two thugs who accuse him of scratching their car with his scooter. They proceed to assault him and leave his unconscious body in a landfill. When Bank regains consciousness the following morning, he is devastated to realize that he has missed the opportunity to take the exam. Later at school, Lin learns about the incident and visits Bank, urging him to join their plan by offering substantial compensation. Initially resistant, Bank's perspective changes when Lin points out the systemic injustice of cheating on disadvantaged individuals like them, asserting that it is only fair to fight back. With their memorization abilities covered, they finalize their heist plan. Lin and Bank decide to take the exam in Australia and conceal phones inside the restroom facilities of the test venue. During the exam breaks, they will excuse themselves to the bathroom and transmit the answers to Grace and Pat. For the final part of the exam, which lacks a break, they will feign illness. Grace and Pat will print the answers on barcode stickers, affix them to pencils, and distribute them to paying students just before their flights. To expand their client base, Pat delivers a special presentation impersonating Steve Jobs, leading them to amass millions. Utilizing Grace's editing skills, fake documents are created, and Lynn convinces her father to sign them under the pretense of participating in the Australian branch of Teen Genius, allowing Lynn to fly without an adult. The subsequent days are dedicated to practice exams and training their memory by sending answers via text messages while hastily visiting restrooms. On the day prior to the exam, the group rehearses their fake tears and alibis in case of detection. During Pat's turn, he concocts a story in which he claims to be unfamiliar with Bank, disparaging him as a loser who woke up in a landfill. Enraged, Bank lunges at Pat, intending to attack him, but the girls swiftly intervene and separate them. Bank clarifies that he never disclosed the landfill incident to anyone, revealing that Pat paid the thugs to ensure Bank missed the test, enabling him to recruit Bank's help instead. Feeling betrayed, Bank withdraws from the plan and departs from the building. However, while on the street, he spots an advertisement for a laundromat and ponders whether he can sustain that life indefinitely. Similarly, Lin is disgusted by the turn of events and quits as well. Grace, pleading her ignorance, implores Lin not to be mad at her, emphasizing the value she places on their friendship. 
Subsequently, Lin sets out to find Bank, who has reconsidered joining the group as he believes he deserves compensation for enduring the beating. Lin initially refuses to assist, but Bank persuades her by asserting that it is her fault he is embroiled in this predicament, urging her to take responsibility and rectify the situation. A few hours later, Lin and Bank board a flight to Sydney. Throughout the journey, they maintain an awkward and silent demeanor, but upon arrival, they reconcile and capture a selfie together. On the morning of the test, they discreetly hide phones in the restrooms before proceeding to the classroom. They swiftly tackle the first part of the exam without any issues, allowing them ample time to commit the answers to memory. When the first break arrives, Lin and Bank hurriedly make their way to the restrooms to transmit the answers. However, before sending his responses, Bank requests additional payment, causing friction with Pat. Initially resistant, Pat relents and sends Bank half of the money, promising to provide the remainder after the test. Bank accepts the payment and finally transmits his answers. A few minutes later, Lin and Bank return to the classroom and efficiently complete the second half of the exam. However, during the second break, they encounter trouble. Bank manages to reach his stall promptly but experiences a momentary lapse in recalling the answers. Despite ultimately sending the responses, the exam invigilator becomes suspicious after noticing Bank's extended absence from the stall. Panic-stricken, Bank accidentally breaks the toilet lid in his haste and attempts to flush the phone down the toilet, but his effort fails, leading to his capture. Meanwhile, Lin, having to wait in line before accessing her stall, successfully transmits all the answers but also raises suspicions due to the extended duration. Fortunately, Lin comes up with the idea of concealing her phone in her shoes, allowing her to exit the bathroom undetected. However, upon leaving, she discovers Bank being reprimanded, and all the students are undergoing a search. To protect the phone, she hides it in the water cooler before returning to the classroom. Regrettably, Bank doesn't reappear, leaving Lin to complete the final part of the exam alone. Initially concerned about memorizing such a vast amount, Lin's hand begins to move instinctively, realizing she can approach it as if reading sheet music. The technique proves effective, but time is running out. To create a diversion, she employs a pencil to induce vomiting, feigning illness. Taking advantage of the ruse, Lin leaves the classroom, retrieves her phone, and stealthily exits the building while evading the officers. However, her peculiar movements catch the attention of security cameras, prompting the officers to give chase. Lin races through the subway station while typing the answers, but an accidental collision causes someone to step on her phone, resulting in a broken screen. Initially thinking she won't be able to complete her task, Lin persists and manages to send all the answers after extensive pressing. Unfortunately, this delay causes her to miss the train, and the pursuing officer apprehends her, summoning her for questioning. On their way out, Lin discreetly slips her phone into a random person's bag. Meanwhile, Pat and Grace are printing the answers when Lin's father unexpectedly appears. Concerned about Lin's lack of communication, he found the address on the paperwork he previously signed. Anxious for answers, Pat and Grace fabricate a story, asserting that Lin and Bank are a couple who embarked on a trip, explaining Lin's deception due to presumed disapproval from her father. Satisfied with this explanation, Lin's father departs, allowing Pat and Grace to finish the stickers just in time to distribute the pencils to the students. During Lin's interrogation, she discovers Bank providing a false narrative, signaling her not to get involved as he is taking the blame to protect everyone. Tearfully, Lin deletes the photo they took together. Upon returning home, Grace and Pat are waiting to invite her to a celebratory party. However, Lin declines, feeling overwhelmed by the cancellation of her scores and bank suspension. She refuses to continue aiding the couple, noting that university exams are not multiple choice anyway. Lin contacts her father to pick her up, and amidst her emotional distress, she confesses everything to him. This results in her expulsion from school. Later, Lin exits the group chat, ignoring Grace's pleas for her to join the party. She has lost a friend, and the victory no longer brings satisfaction. When Lin attempts to apply to a local university to study education, an officer reminds her of the importance of imparting good morals as a teacher, intensifying her guilt. After the interview concludes, Lin receives an unexpected text from Bank, requesting her presence. Arriving at his home, she notices that he has used the money to significantly upgrade the laundromat's equipment. Bank explains his intention to earn more money by assisting other students with their tests, ensuring a safer operation with a wider clientele. When Lin declines his proposal, Bank threatens to expose the entire ordeal. However, Lin reveals that she has already made her decision. 
Some time later, Lin visits the STIC organization and, with her father's encouragement in mind, she confesses the entire truth. 